December 9th, welcome to another Advent Calendar video. Today we're going to talk about UI view controller and especially how we can deal with transferring information from one view controller to another. And we're going to explore one possible way today and we're going to see how we can do the same thing using segways in another video. So let's get right started and create a new Xcode project. I'm pressing Command Shift N on my keyboard, selecting the single view application template and I'm calling this view controller example and hit next and create that project on my desktop and then we're going to see a pretty common use case once I open up the storyboard we have our first view controller that is created by the single view application template and we also have our a little arrow here that indicates that this is the initial view controller where we start when we open up our application. And now I'm adding a second view controller here and we want now to transfer information from this view controller to this one and also present it by the click of a button. So let's make sure that we can detect those two different view controllers by changing maybe the background color a little. This is going to get a green color. This is going to get a blue color. And then we're adding a button here. Let's say show show second view controller. Let's make this maybe black. And then I'm copying this button, pasting it right here. And then we're adding another button here in the top left corner saying this miss. And we're also going to add a label here in the center that we're going to call information. And in this label, we want to display text that we send to our second view controller from our first view controller. And now just to make sure that the layout works on every screen size, we set the auto resizing masks for information, for example, we deactivate all of the pins here in the uh, size inspector and this means that our label is always centered. The dismiss button is configured correctly with the pins to the top and to the left. And here again for the show second VC button we again deactivate all those pins here to make sure that it is always centered. So if we are working with two different view controllers, we of course also need to create some classes or one class for our second view controller here. So I'm pressing on my first view controller. We could also rename that first view controller, but to keep it simple, let's simply keep the name view controller here. And then we are selecting a Coco Touch class and naming our class second view controller. And of course we want a subclass of UI view controller here. So hit next and create that. And we can use this second view controller class now to connect that code or that class with the storyboard by clicking on our second view controller here on the view controller and choosing it as its custom class. So I'm entering second view controller right here. And now if I open up the assistant editor and make sure that it's set to automatic, then we can see our second view controller class and we can also make all of the connections that we want, for example, with the dismiss button or the information label. So let's first, before we do that, let's also give our view controller a so-called storyboard ID that we can use later to instantiate the view controller from somewhere else. So I'm calling this second VC here, this is my storyboard ID and we're going to work with that in a second. But now let's make the necessary connections here. First of all, we have a information label. So let's make an outlet for that information label. And we do not need an outlet really for our dismiss button, but we want an action. So let's press control on the keyboard and um, select action as a connection. And maybe we call that go back and we are going back to the first view controller if we press this button. But now let's go back to our first view controller here and create a new action for this button, for our show second VC button. We are also calling this function maybe show second VC, so show second view controller. This is an action. And now let's see how we can actually display this view controller. So I'm selecting my first view controller Swift file 
And in our new function, what we need to do is first of all, create a storyboard object because we are using the storyboard to instantiate the view controller. And therefore I'm initializing that with UI storyboard. We have to uh, provide it with a name and this is the file name of our storyboard, which is a main and we specify nil for our bundle. And then what we can do is creating a second view controller object. And to get to or to initialize this object, we're using the storyboard and call the instantiate view controller with identifier function. And this function now requires an identifier. And this is the identifier we entered in the in, in interface builder as our storyboard ID. So here we choose second VC, and then we can cast that to a second view controller, which is important when we want to access properties of this specific class, what we are going to do next. And then we can put an if statement around this line of code to check if this uh, truly works. And if we can really create that second view controller, um, it could possibly be that we did not spell second VC correctly, and then this would fail. And so we know that we can only display our second view controller if everything worked. And then we just have to use self as a reference to our current view controller and call the present function. And we want, uh, we have to specify a view controller we want to present, which is our second view controller. We can specify if we want this to be animated and we want this to be animated. And we could also specify in a completion closure what should happen when this transition is completed, but we don't want this right now. So with that done, we can already have a look at the simulator and see if this works and if we can really click on that button or press that button on a real device. And here we go, we have our first view controller, I press show second VC. And here we go. Now before we infer before we display any information, let's handle this dismiss button. So let's go back to our second view controller. And to dismiss the second view controller, all we need to do is again, call self and dismiss. And we are again asked if we want this to be animated. And we could again specify a completion closure here. So let's run this again. And now we should be able to go back and forth um, with our view controller. So I show my second VC. And now I go back and I can show it again and so on. But how do we get information from one view controller to the other? So we have two possible approaches here. The first one is actually creating a property here. This could be a computed property for let's say info object, which is a string. And this could be optional since we might not always want to provide our label with information. And then we make this a computed property by adding some curly braces, and then we can use did set in our computed property and perform one block if we set information into our info object, if we initialized it. And then what we can do is use, for example, the information label, its text property and set it to our info objects content. So this is one possibility we have. But when we are going back to our view controller now to set our object or to use our info object, we could use our second VC and use the info object as soon as I built the application once. So second VC and info object. And I set this for example, to hello world, world like this. And we run the application now, then we're going to encounter an error. So let's just uh, see that in the simulator, we press show second VC. And then we have a fatal error unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. And the problem here is that we set our text property of the information label before the information label is created. That means that what we should do is set the object after we presented the view controller. So this is going to take place very fast after we press the button. So in most cases, this should work. And as you can see, we have hello world here. So no, pro no problem there. But another approach would be to take the second view controller and do not put this did set into our info object. So we can remove that. And what we could do instead is simply do the same thing, set the information labels text property to the info object 
in viewed load. And this would give us the possibility to go back into our view controller and also set this property info object before we present our second view controller. So if we have a look at that now, this should work also pretty well. So here we are, we have our hello world again. And these are the two approaches and you need to decide that uh, based on the number of operations you want to perform with your information object, what you want to display in the user interface. Is there an animation going on between the two view controllers uh, where you need the information a little earlier? So these are two approaches that you could choose and also creating a um, view controller object using storyboard ID and the instantiate view controller function is also only one way to present a second view controller or multiple view controllers. And we're going to have a look at using segways in another video. And if you want to learn more about UI, can make sure to check out the complete advent calendar playlist in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you tomorrow.